Hello everyone and welcome back to another exciting chess game from the history of chess. And in this chess game, white is Wazerol Capablanca and his opponent is Juan Corzo. And this was yet another amazing chess game by Wazerol Capablanca. A clock simul, a three-board clock simul, which means Capablanca was also dealing with the time pressure when he was dealing with three different opponents at the same time. It was a quite task for Capablanca, but we know that he was a very speedy chess master. He was the speedy Gonzalez of chess. He was a very fast chess player. They say Capablanca was making his moves without even thinking. It seemed like he was not thinking because he was intuitively, he was intuitively finding the correct moves and then he was crushing his opponents. So let's check out how this chess game went on. Capablanca's opponent was not a slouch. He was five times chess champion of Cuba. Interesting, isn't it? He was also the friend of Capablanca. So they both founded the Chess Federation of Cuba. And before starting to this chess game, let me show you a beautiful picture from the good old days. As you can see, Capablanca is in the middle. I am sure you all recognize Capablanca. He is the gentleman with the beautiful white jacket who looks more like James Bond along with other chess players. Back then people used to wear better clothes, isn't it? The fashion back then was looking much better, in my opinion. This is my personal opinion. They look more like a gentleman. It looks classy. Their clothes are looking classy. All of them are looking like James Bond from 1950s, like Sean Connery or something like that. The second gentleman on the left with glasses is Juan Corzo. So let's check out how this chess game went on by Capablanca. Well, in this chess game, we have the Spanish opening, a6, and simply developing the pieces. Defending the bishop, the light square bishop was important for Capablanca and note how Capablanca's bishop is aiming the king side like a heat seeking missile, like a ballistic missile. So bishop to e7 and b4, knight to d7, rook to e1, defending the pawn, extra defense, and lining the rook with the king, knight to b6, a4, castling, exchanging the pawns. But now, knight to a3, attacking the pawn, how to defend, black is not defending. But this is very dangerous against Capablanca. So in this position, simply white is a pawn up. You don't want to be a pawn down against Hozerol Capablanca. If defending with the queen, then queen to d3. Both threatening checkmate and attacking the pawn. There is no good defense in this position. So we have knight to c4, but then knight takes on b5. Queen to b7 defending, bishop to g4. Exchanging the knights and attacking the queen. If bishop takes queen, then knight takes queen. Queen to d7. What would you do? This is what Capablanca did. Pushing the pawn. Attacking the queen. Capturing. Capturing back. But now attacking the h-pawn. How to defend. Threatening checkmate in few moves. After bishop takes on h7. Moving the king and bishop to g6. Check. Moving the kick to g8 and then queen to h7, check, mate. So defending with pushing the pawn. If pushing the h-pawn, what happens then? Then bishop takes, bang. If capturing back, then boom, checkmate. There is no defense. In the real game, we have pushing the pawn. And what would you do in this position? Well, Capablanca sent his opponent a bolt of lightning. And he captured the pawn. Bishop takes on g6. What an incredible attack by Capablanca. A vicious attack. Capturing back. And capturing with the queen. Check. Moving the king. And rook takes on e6. We have bishop to h4. Well, in this position, let's make a random and a very silly move. What happens then? Then black is getting checkmated by force. Check. Mate. King to h8. After rook takes on e6, moving the bishop, but checking the king, checking again, moving the king, check, check, rook to f7, and checking the king, king to e7, and Capablanca captured the bishop, and Corzo resigned, the five times chess champion of Cuba resigned, 
an effortless victory by Capablanca. What a beautiful victory and his opponent resigned. Well, Corzo was not a slouch once again. He was a very good chess master for his time. And his lifetime record against Capablanca is actually not that bad. Capablanca had the narrow lead against Corzo. But Corzo was defeated against Capablanca when Capablanca was only 13 years old. That was also a narrow defeat. And Capablanca defeated his opponent when he was only 13 years old in a match. Corzo was 15 years older than Capablanca. Juan Corzo died in 1941. Capablanca died in 1942. This is only for the records. So anyway, in this position, Black resigned. The possible continuation, moving the king and then checking the king, king to e5. Well, of course, in this position, you can't block with the queen or the rook or with the rook. So king to e5, sucking the king to the south of the board. So check. And how to defend? Threatening checkmate, queen to f4, knight to e3, capturing the knight. And then check, mate. What a game by Capablanca. Another incredible attack by Jose Rol Capablanca. And in this position, if you did see sacrificing the bishop, then well done. Because everything is going upside down for Corzo. Especially after capturing the pawn. Rook take, rook take, son e6. If you see the sacrifice, then do it. Don't wait, just do it and sacrifice your pieces one after another and then crush your opponent. This is what Capablanca did, a perfect demonstration of how to crush your opponent. Let me show you the last move of this chess game. Capturing the bishop and Corzo resigned. What a game, what an incredible chess game, what an incredible chess game by Capablanca. Simple, elegant and beautiful. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time. Take care and bye bye.